Hello guys, I'm John Better Waffles Algets, and in my last tutorial where I was talking about custom tile sets, something that I brought up was that one of the best ways to differentiate yourself from other RPG Maker projects is to have custom graphics. Now, that doesn't just mean tile sets and sprites, that also means menu graphics. Now, you could go in and get really in-depth and use different plugins and things of that nature, and I will be talking about plugins in the future. I have an episode coming up in a few weeks where I will be talking about plugins, but for now, I'm going to show you a really, really quick, uh, really simple way to get sort of custom menu graphics. So, I got a Slack message. Look at that. So, okay, getting back to this. So if you go to wherever your game project is, for me, that's in my documents, games. These are all my game projects. A lot of stuff that I haven't done anything with. So, but anyways, uh, go into your games folder and go into this IMG or images folder. And then system. And these are all the like system related graphics. So you have like, you know, what font damage numbers use. You have animations for like the expressions that people can use. You've got your game over screen. These are all graphics that you should maybe at some point in the future be thinking about changing. But for now, we're going to be paying attention to this window graphic here. Now, uh, when you look at it, you know, you've got all your different sections. These define different traits for the image. And you can experiment and play with them and see what different sections do. But I'm going to be replacing this border with just a simple gold border for the purposes of this tutorial. So I'm going to open it up in Photoshop. Um, you can also use GIMP. Uh, I wouldn't use Paint for this because you... Cause this graphic has certain alpha channel transparencies and certain opacity, as you can see, uh, elements to it that you really want to uh, sort of maintain. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't use paint because paint doesn't work with transparencies, whereas something like GIMP or Photoshop do. Uh, GIMP is free, so get that if you don't have money or you know, use Photoshop. There are ways that you can get Photoshop that I'm not going to talk about, but you know, there are ways. So anyways, I'm going to zoom in here. Now I'm going to be paying attention to this quadrant right here. Cause again, I want to put a very simple gold border. So what I'm actually going to do is I am going to delete that. Now, if you'll notice, I actually have a bit of the shadow, the drop shadow, left over so I'm just gonna grab my eraser tool here and without erasing the buttons because I'm not gonna mess with the directional arrows for this because I'm just not gonna change those in this tutorial so I'm not gonna erase those but I'm gonna erase this shadow I'm gonna do kind of a sloppy job of it because I'm trying to do this quickly uh, you could go in and you know uh, get the stuff around the edges of the box a little bit better than I'm going to. But again, I'm just trying to show you guys a real simple, basic edit to this graphic. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a new layer. And you'll understand why I'm doing this here soon. And I'm going to use this lasso tool. And what I'm going to do with the lasso tool is I'm going to find this point right up here where these two kind of gray boxes meet and I'm going to click and I'm going to hold shift and draw a line down to the equivalent box down here. And I'm basically just going to do this and just draw a square. I'm a little bit off, but that's okay. Okay. So now I've got everything in here selected on this upper layer and I'm going to fill it with a color. I'm going to choose like a, a sort of gold ish color. Now that's going to fill in this whole box, which I don't want, but I'm going to use it here to create a border. I'm going to turn the opacity down so I can see the grid behind it. Cause I'm going to, uh, what was the, I don't remember the hockey for that control D anyways, I'm going to go here and I'm just going to click a little bit away from the edge of the 
yellow sort of doing that again I'm doing this pretty pretty sloppily because I'm just trying to get something to illustrate to you guys what you can do so I'm actually I'm gonna select that interior part and I'm gonna delete that crank the opacity back up to 100 now you see we have a nice rectangular border you can curve the edges you can do all sort of like you know weird rosary gilding kind of stuff um, but I'm not gonna mess with that and but what I am gonna mess with is I'm going to do blending options that brings up this little blending options menu for this layer this is why I put the gold border on a separate layer and I'm going to click on the bevel and emboss that sort of you know gives it a bit of a 3d feel I'm going to do hmm, maybe a pillow emboss with a hard chisel and I'm going to mess with the settings a little bit just so that I can get something that I like so I don't want it to be that hardcore and I want it to soften a little bit but not like real softened okay so you could also like texture it you know give it a gradient do all that sort of stuff I'm gonna give it a bit of a drop shadow maybe hmm yeah let's uh let's mess with the angle a little bit uh, oops that's haha <laughs> that was the embossings angle i want to mess with the drop shadows angle that's a bit extreme let's pull the distance in a bit okay I'm liking the way that looks. So let's just zoom out a bit, get a good look at it. Nice, looks good. Looks, I mean, it looks simple. Save as, you're, you're probably going to want to back up the original window graphic, save it as like window original. Um, it's not totally necessary because every single time that you create a new project, it will actually create a new window graphic. So you can just grab a window graphic from another folder. Uh, but you can back it up if you're, you know, one of those people. So I'm going to save it as windows dot as window dot PNG. You want to save it as a PNG because that's the format that has the transparency and that's the format that RPG maker is going to recognize and be able to use. So save it, overwrite that original. Okay. So now, uh, no, not necessary. Now, when you go into MV, you go into your systems change the window color to something that's going to work with it. I'm going to give it like a deep, like kind of wine red sort of sanguine kind of, kind of look. Oh, I'm a, I'm apparently offline in origin. That's neat. Okay. So now let's go into the game and you will see the menu. Yay. It looks different. So yeah, that right there already looks different than every other RPG Maker game out there with just a little tiny tweak. Now you can you can take this this idea and combine it with plugins and get different looks. You know, really quick, I'm gonna apply one of the plugins that comes built in to uh, MV and just you know this will give us a different looking menu. And yeah, already right there, that looks super different, you know, okay, not super different, but it looks different and it just gives it, it gives it its own sort of flavor, its own sort of feel. So try experimenting, try playing around, see what you guys can come up with. Um, tweet it at me. I'm at Bender Waffles on Twitter. I want to see what you guys are making. Uh, I love it when you guys tweet me stuff. So just keep on doing that. Um, and uh, if you like this video, you can give it a like, leave a comment down below, uh, you know, subscribe. I'm going to have more videos coming. I'm sticking pretty hard to the Wednesday, Saturday upload schedule. Uh, I, yeah, I'm having some trouble putting out the bigger videos, like the tutorials and stuff, but there will be more tutorials coming in the future. So just stay tuned. Uh, as I said, subscribe. And uh, I hope you guys have a good day or evening or morning or whenever you're watching this. Just have a good time.